coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pound, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Bang, bang, bang. We out here, 33 years of prison stories. We rolling. Man, we rolling, we rolling. I appreciate all the love, man. I appreciate the support. Um, I'm on the move, man. I got a lot of things to do, but today I wanted to drop this on y'all because it's on my mind, man. You know, uh, as y'all can see, I got to go shoot a podcast that y'all need to come over there and rock with me, but in the meantime, I wanted to just uh, get this out of my head while it was in my head, you know, uh, came from a comment, was asking about, you know, like, what you do when somebody pull up on you with the Bethlehem and you ain't got one, you know, and like I, I had made that video recently, I told y'all, you know, a lot of dudes... <laughs> It get in the wind, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, what if you can't run? What if you trap? What if you just, you know, just standing there and, and, you, and you face with that joint? You standing, you staring down the barrel of that Bethlehem and somebody's hand looking all menacing and dangerous. It's, uh, it's crazy, man. Um, and I've been in a couple of situations like that. I told y'all about that, you know, um, in, in previous videos. I may not have went into detail as much on just that particular feeling, that particular, you know, situation. But I remember I was telling y'all about <clears throat> when I was on Greensville and the dude, you know, Kevon he had got his cell robbed. Somebody that took his stuff out of cell. So, you know, you know, he was he, he was a drug boy. So, you know, he had a lot of hanger-ons, you know, a lot of dudes that, you know, want to, you know, uh, you know, be 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 brown nosing him and kissing his butt because he, you know, he get the sack, so they want to get high. So you know, when you got dudes like that, you always gonna have some other dudes that's gonna be willing to do some for him just to get in his favor or this, that, and the third. Just so they, you know, everybody's angling in prison. Like I told you, they angling for something. You know, like I said, dude, speak to you this morning, and you don't speak to you. Probably gonna ask you for something later on. You know what I'm saying? Like you just. Don't know that. You great. You ain't been speaking to him, but now he want to, hey, man, what's up? And carry on a conversation with you and all this, all the time. He wants some, you know. So um, you you come to learn that as time go on when you're doing time, right? But, um, yeah, so Kevon had all these dudes that'll rock with him, you know what I'm saying? And when his stuff got stolen, you know, he he, he was flabbergasted. He was like, man, who going to try me like that? Who gonna, you know what I'm saying? Go on my cell still. They went in there and stole a whole lot of cigarettes, you know. And um, he just was snapping, so he took it upon himself to get a whole rack of dudes, man, group of dudes, man. I'm talking about 10, 12, 13 dudes, and they going like they going from sale to sale and looking people's sale, you know, looking for his cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Crazy, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he when you got all them dudes, it's the intimidation factor. You know what I'm saying? And, and a couple of them scrapped, and he was strapped. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, him and my Sally, like I say, they best friends and they business partners. So I'm down there on the phone, you know, with Kevon and them. I see them moving down the line. Then when they get to our cell, they go up in the cell. And I'm like, oh, oh, no, oh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. So I get off the phone and I go up there and I, you know, bogart my ray up in the cell. And when I get up in the cell, he's standing in there talking to my cell. And I'm like, man, what you, I mean, what's going on up here? What, 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 what they doing up here? They ain't going to nothing of mine. You know what I'm saying? What y'all doing? And he was like, you know, no, bank man, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, man, we, you know, we know y'all ain't doing it, man, but we just can't, you know, leave nobody out. We got to go in everybody, you know, man, you know what I'm saying, let them know we serve. Well, I'm like, I don't, yeah, okay, but y'all ain't going up in my lock, you know. And he was, he was nervous, man, and I could see him because he was shaking and nervous. And then when I looked down at his hand, man, he holding that big old thing up in his hand, man. <laughs> you know, he got that Bethlehem in his hand. I ain't got nothing with a mask. He got all these dudes at the door. My temperature rising. He's nervous. He's shaking and he clutching this joint. And in my mind, you know, so many things going through my mind at the time. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm ready to snap because I'm like, man, this this ain't happening. But I'm also looking at the dynamics. I'm looking at the us, what 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 can transpire, what will transpire, and and. 
you know, all of this is just zooming through your mind, but you know, you do not lose the fact that that Bethlehem in his hand, you know what I'm saying? Big, still, ready to, you know what I'm saying? You know, penetrate your body, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a crazy feeling, man. My adrenaline was pumping, you know, because I'm considering if he if they tried to, you know, like Buck said, like we going in there, I'm I'm taking off. Bang, bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know what's going to happen, whether I'm going to be able to get out of there or, you know what I'm saying, without getting, you know, uh, poked all up or, 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 or possibly killed or whatever. But I'm determined and, and emphatic that you're not going in my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Straight like that. You you ain't going in my stuff. So, man, it, it, it was crazy. But just to see him holding it and see, that's the thing about it's just like a dude with a gun, Right? When they nervous, man, they can shoot you off of nervousness. Not meaning to shoot you, not wanting to shoot you, but they so nervous. And they, like I told you, nobody want to get hurt. You see what I'm saying? Nobody wants to get hurt. And Kieran knew, and he, you know, later on, you know what I'm saying, we, after the stuff was all over and down the line, we were and ran into each other again and this, that, and the third. He was explaining to me his frame of mind. Like, man, he was like, man, man, I what, man, man, I know you can box, man. I'm thinking about, man, you, you know, I know you was mad. I'm thinking about, man, you might knock me out and take this, Jones. So I was, I was, I was, that's why I was gripping it so hard because I ain't know what you was going to do. And I'm like, you know, so yeah. So he acting like he, he, he basically telling me he was ready to poke me, you know what I'm saying, out of fear. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling, my mind is like, I'm telling him, I was ready to take off on you. I, same way, out of fear. Because I'm, if I'm going to get hit, I'm going to be hitting back. I'm going to be swinging. I mean, my hands ain't going to be in my pocket. I'm not just going to let you, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, I'm, no, you know what I'm saying? Then all the cats at the door, you know, telling what they would have did. I'm quite sure a couple of them would scrap too. But it's just a, it's just like one of those intense moments that you, you know, you, you face with that situation. Like what you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Not only you got to know what you're going to do, you got to also know what you're not going to do. You understand? So that, that was like a real, real tense situation, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I told y'all in the other video, y'all go check it out. But I that situation shook out. But, uh, yeah, but just at that moment, you know, just at that moment when you you looking down at that, that, that knife in somebody's hand, that Bethlehem, and they gripping it. You got to consider what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? You got to consider if you get hit, what, what you know what I'm saying? Can you, you know, uh, fend it off and, 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 and like more or less direct where you get hit? If you, because, you know, it, even if you, you know, like me, I got some skills. So, but at the same time, you know, even in boxing, you get hit. You know what I'm saying? So if he just take off swinging all while and we in this closed confinement, this closed off area, it's going to be hard for me to really avoid taking any shot if he know anything, if he just starts swinging willy-nilly. So my philosophy was to take off on him first, you know what I'm saying? Like he said, knock him out, you know what I'm saying? Or just like, bang, 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 you know what I'm saying? And just try to catch him off guard, but then I got to worry about the dudes that's at the door too, you know what I'm saying? Are they going to charge? Are they going to, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 um, you know, run down on me if I take off on him and they do they got knives or you know what I'm saying? So it was just a crazy, crazy tense situation, man. And um, you know, another one of those situations, like I said, where God was with me, you know, and it ain't it ain't shake out the way it could have shook out. It could have been bad, it could have been nasty, it could have been ugly. But you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, thank God it, it, it wasn't, you know. And, you know, it's been a couple of situations like that in, in my bit, man. I remember another dude, I think I spoke about this too on Power Tell, my homeboy, you know what I'm saying, when he had this little crazy, he was starting to lose it. He had this little crazy thing in his mind about, um, you know, uh, uh, cutting into his money or bad-mouthing him to the people where don't nobody want to buy his liquor, his wine, you know what I'm saying, so he don't. He don't Call me down and pull up on me. And I'm, man, it was cool. You know, he my home and everything. So we talking and everything. And he talking in riddles and, you know, uh, codes and all this. And he talking so low. And I'm trying to hear him. And I'm at his door. And all of a sudden, then I look, man, and he he got his hands like on the junk. Like he got the junk. Like he ready to, you know what I'm saying, man. 
Man, when that reality set in your head, it's like, I don't know about nobody else, but me, it's like it set in my head. Like, the first thing come to my mind is, you know, this dude, you know, ain't, ain't got no regard for my life. You know what I'm saying? Not none. He, he, he thinking about hurting me. He thinking about, you know, killing me or, or poking me where, I, you know, even if he just thinking about hitting me or stabbing me with the joke, you know, you can't determine what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? A foreign object going into a human body, man, you could be meaning to hurt somebody. That could be your intentions, but you could hit a vital organ and kill somebody. So when I think about somebody, you know, brandishing, you know, the Bethlehem against me or or, 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 or acting like they're going to do something to me, I always think that they just have no regard for my life. And in turn for that, you know what I'm saying, if you don't care about my life, I, I, I care even less about yours. You know, so that be the frame of mind that I be in. And, you know, um, yeah, that changed our whole dynamics right there. Because then when I went, I, you know, as I told y'all in that video, I went back and got straight and pulled back up on him. And if he would have act like he wanted anything, he was, yeah, he was getting ready to go away from here. You know what I'm saying? He was getting ready to go away from here. And I seen it over the years, though, with other people as well. You know what I'm saying? They, they you know, talking and talking trash and they beefing and running their mouths to each other and dude acting like, you know, he getting ready to get up on him and do something like he getting ready to swing on and, and, and lo and behold that, that dude reach down or reach up in his coat and pull that joint out and be like, go ahead, go ahead and they, man, they just stop you dead in your tracks, man, like deer in the headlights man, it's like, oh, oh, okay you got, the, okay, alright, alright and a lot of dudes, it's like you see the old you know, hood stuff, like, okay, wait till I come back, or, you know, like on the street, okay, I'll be back, and all of that be going on, but really, I'm trying to think in my mind that I see somebody, you know, like, pull it out on the dude, and the dude ain't got that one, and he just take off anyway, um, yeah, yeah, well, I have, I told y'all about that as well, where, you know what I'm saying, where the dude, um, he out there, I seen him now, he out there, they had the situation where they was trying to claim like he was my cousin or something. And we go out there and he beefing with the New York dudes and everything. And the dude talking to him, put his arm around him and pull him to the side and talk to him. While me and Dixie talk to his homeboys and everything. And then dude just all of a sudden punch him. Boom, boom. And he pull that thing out, man, and start. Eh, 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 and I mean, he lit him up. I mean, he lit him up like a Christmas tree, man. He bleeding from the face. He bleeding everywhere. And he steady walking towards the dude. And dude telling him, man, you better back up. You better back up. And I, I think he was he I think he was in like a, a a a shock or something because he was literally he was literally getting ready to die. You know what I'm saying? Cause he kept walking up on dude, man. Dude had already hit him a couple times. Obviously, he not playing with you, he's not trying to scratch you, nothing. He gonna hurt you, you know what I'm saying? And, and he, you already leaking. But he was like in shock. He was like, oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, you done stab. It, it, it was crazy, man. And it, even his own homeboys then was telling him, hey, come on, man, come on. You know, so he kept going at him, though, walking towards him and walking towards him until, you know, like I say, the police came out or whatnot. But I remember that situation, which was crazy. Um, I done seen dudes not run, though, after they got hit. A couple of dudes, I done seen them not run after they got hit. You know, like I, I think I spoke about that too, the butter situation down there in the um salad port with uh with old blood and blood pulled that thing out and he he was trying to fight, but I believe it but he, he would've he would have tried to get away, but he couldn't get away because we were locked in. So he had no other choice but to just keep on rumbling, you know what I'm saying, even though dude hitting him and coming at him with the joint. But I believe if it was an escape route, he would have took it, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and there ain't no shame in that, because like I say, you know, the number one rule is you got to preserve life. You see what I'm saying? You got to preserve life, you know? And, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of that now, you know, because I'm thinking in my mind trying to remember these type of things, because I just sit in here to drop this on y'all real fast, because it was on my mind, it was a thought, so... I wanted to try to start getting this stuff out to y'all wise in my head because I'm like uh, micromanaging a lot of things right now. And um, I be wanting to keep y'all, you know, with this content, man, because it's always something that you might can get something out of this stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I, I've seen a couple of these situations, man, where a dude was up under that Bethlehem, man. And I seen, like I say, more 
more often than not, I've seen dudes fold. They they back up, they retreat. But I've seen dudes go get that thing and come back and put that work in too for you pulling it on a period. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen a lot of dudes, man, that they play a dude for weak or they think that he's not going to do nothing until he pull that thing out and they realize, oh, um, yeah, this is what type of party this is and, and uh, I ain't trying to go to this party. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that happens, man. That happens because that, that thing will make you change your mind, man. It really it really will. And then you, you will underestimate somebody and you will think that he won't use it or you will think that this ain't the type of dude that, that, that will have one or he... Ain't, he ain't built like that. Nah, that ain't never that ain't never a good assumption, and it could be a deadly assumption because if you're wrong, it can cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, it's 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 tricky, man. But it, it it's it's a it's a eerie eerie feeling, more or less. You know, to to answer the question in the comment, man. It, it it is, man, and I can liken it or imagine it to be the same way. Like when you're on the street and somebody pull a gun on you and you ain't got no gun, you know what I'm saying? You you really at their mercy, you know, you know, for real. You at their mercy. You at, at their mercy, but then you gotta wonder if they gonna have any mercy. You know, because normally when a dude see you get scared or he see that you shook, then he usually gets more aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Because he's feeding off of your fear. You dig? He's feeding off of your fear. So you have to really try to elude no fear to, you know, get control of the situation. You know, but when you act like you're really scared, he's going to act like he's more aggressive. And then that aggression and your fear could, you know, boom. And there it is. And somebody, somebody hurt. Somebody may be, you know, uh, 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 without life. So... It's just crazy situations, man. It happens in prison all the time, man. And, uh, you know, in prison, that, that Bethlehem is the weapon of choice, man. There's no guns in there. There's no shotguns. There's no pistols. There's none of that. So that's what it is. So in prison, it is the gun. It is the equivalent to the shotgun. It's, it is the same thing, and it has the same effect. You know, it moves people, you know, fast and make them make decisions, man, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, but um, anyway, that was just a quick one. I'll be back at y'all in a minute, you dig? Um, but let me tell y'all something, man. I'm very, very, very disappointed, man. I'm very disappointed. I got to say this because y'all, as y'all can see, we starting this new podcast over there, Living Life After Life podcast with Troy Catchmore, Banky Pam, featuring comedian Nicole Bunch. And we need y'all to come over there and support, man. We're trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers before we start dropping this content. We already have started dropping um, shorts on the page. We got a lot of shorts. We got a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. So y'all can, you know, catch when our personalities, just that and the third. But y'all already know, man. Y'all already know. Talk to me. I talk back. But... I'm, I'm just surprised, man, that I got all this love over here, man, and 65, almost 66,000 subscribers, and I ain't got but 220, as I last look, 222 subscribers over there, you know, and I'm thinking about starting this workout channel, you know, get my workout on, get, you know, get back in shape, get my sexy back and all of that, and now I'm kind of like nervous because I don't know if I'm going to get the support. I need the support. This is the same thing that's going on with uh, Pure Deliciousness. Because all of these things take time to do and, you know, you don't want to take out all that time to do it and no one's going to watch it. So I focus on this and y'all, but I need to, you know, get other messages out there as well. All positive, all, you know, um, helpful and all, you know, informative, man. And that's what we're doing over there on Living Life After Life podcast, man. We done had some bomb interviews that we already got in the bag. And we ain't, we just ain't started dropping them yet. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're going to start dropping them. We have interviewed the one, the only, King Push, Pusha T. We got Pusha T for our interview over there, exclusive. That is, you know, big ups to him. He's a real live soldier. Pulled up like a real life soldier. Much respect for him. We done interviewed, man, um, Young Mo out of Alexandria. Got a video out with uh, Kevin Gates last year. Over 23 million views. Independent artist doing his thing. Um, we interviewed Nicole Bunch, the comedian extraordinaire. And we got some bomb interviews on the way as well. You know, I don't want to really say these names because we got some more big names. You know, but I don't really want to say them yet until we get the video done. 
you know what I'm saying, locked in and done. That's how I do. I don't really say nothing. It's just like the same thing with the no jumper, with the Vlad. I don't say nothing until I know it's done or it's secure. So same thing, man. But we got some we got some big names coming through there. So y'all need to come over there and support, man. TBP, stand up. You know what I'm saying? Stand up, support your boy. Boom. You know, we out here. We we trying to make change. We trying to make a difference. And we trying to uh, make some noise in this um, social media, man, so people can listen to us, man. And maybe we can uh, help some people, save some people, and change some lives. And that's our whole goal, man. The same thing. And, you know, we living life after life, man. Troy Catchmore had life. Did 26 years for a crime that he did not commit. You know, as y'all know, I had double life. I did 33 years. So we living life after life, man. We ain't let what happened to us define what's going to happen to us. So we're going to keep on pushing, man, and hopefully I got y'all support. So y'all go over there to Living Life After Life podcast, man, and hit that subscribe button. And y'all stay tuned. Hit your notification buttons, and we're going to be coming at y'all real soon, man. As soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers, we drop it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just remember now, we got King Push. Boom. Salute. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. I love y'all out there, man. Um, enjoy yourself this weekend. Have fun. And I'll be right back at you in a minute. And as always, man, duck them hooks. Bang, 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 bang. They come from everywhere, man. We out there. TBP, stand up. Bang. The bank is special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.